Okay, I I am the last speaker uh, before lunch session, <laughs> and thank you for being here. And uh, I will uh, present uh, some of the preliminary results uh, about drought monitoring uh, in Sri Lanka in the context of uh, a project. Uh, which is uh, funded by a program on the uh, Swiss National Science Foundation, and is it a program for research for development. So the idea is to have some projects shared between uh, Switzerland universities and universities from low-income countries to develop something that can address some global issues. And uh, our project is about building uh, a, a system to make uh, monitoring of the weather in uh, uh, low-income countries using only open uh, technologies. It means that we are using the acronym is for ONSE. It means four times open and non-conventional system for sensing the environment. So, uh, which are the four uh, open technologies that we're using? We are using uh, open source uh, software, we use open standard, we use open hardware, and uh, then we apply open data. And uh, this is a, a short introduction to stress the fact that uh, uh, climate changes uh, and drought is a very important problem, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, well, uh, reported by the World uh, Meteorological Organization and is also part of uh, the SDGs. And uh, to observe data related to hydroclimatics, we can uh, uh, use two different types of uh, sensing. And we can have uh, in situ observation or remote observation. Remote observation relies on Earth observation like satellites uh, monitoring, and uh, they have uh, some advantages and some uh, disadvantages, and the same for in-situ observation. Uh, the advantage for uh, satellite data is that they are specially distributed, of course. You collect images of a large area. A high coverage because uh, they uh, rotate around the globe and collect a very large area of data. And uh, it's very important things, uh, they are maintained by external bodies. So generally the user doesn't have to pay for uh, uh, the maintenance of the satellites and the missions, and this is in charge of external bodies. And uh, as a drawback, there is a low temporal and special resolution, because, uh, uh, for example, uh, the returning period over the same area is not always, uh, for example, uh, every 10 seconds. And also the spatial resolution. Even though you uh, can have uh, higher resolution images, still you have some meters at the soil, at the terrain. In situ observation are generally point-wise measurements and uh, have, uh, so have, are uh, high uh, resoluted, high temporal resolution. Generally with the uh, in-situ sensor you can collect uh, high frequency data and uh, they generally have uh, high precision. And uh, uh, as a drawback, uh, they have uh, uh, low spatial density, let's say, resolution is not the right wo uh, word. So in a, a vast area you generally don't have so many sensors. And uh, the cost of maintenance of such kind of sensor is on your own. So if you have your own network, you are responsible to pay for the maintenance of the instruments and all of the system, not just uh, use it. And there are uh, some uh, factors that uh, affect uh, the limits, uh, the usage of uh, in-situ sensor in uh, low-income countries, but this is also found in most developed countries. And there are uh, limitation costs because, uh, as I said, the cost is uh, on your shoulder and uh, there is hardware cost but also software cost. Generally, company, when they sell you a weather station, they sell you uh, the sensor and this has a cost, but then sell you also uh, the software to collect data from this sensor. And this is also is an additional cost. 
and not always these costs uh, are, uh, can be sustained. But then there are other problems that are not related to the cost and are, for example, for accessibility. And accessibility, uh, for example, to local support. You can buy some instruments uh, from uh, foreign countries, from US, but then uh, the project ends, you don't have uh, any local uh, companies that sell these products, and then you cannot uh, uh, have a local support for uh, replacement, uh, for updating the source code, and all these kind of things. The third uh, factor is about interoperability. Is uh, that uh, generally companies use closed protocol, so different uh, stations, different sensors have different protocol, different data formats, so it's difficult then to collect all the data and put everything together to make analysis, and generally they are proprietary solution and there is no coordination at all. Uh, for example, I was in contact with people from the World Bank and in Cuba they had something like uh, six different uh, uh, monitoring networks for the climate, but they cannot join together because each project implemented its own, but then they are not talking each uh, together. And so we tried uh, to address all these things, implementing a solution fully open, so that uh, we hope that we can uh, overcome uh, some of these limiting factors. And the partners are SUBSI from Switzerland, University of Morotowa from Sri Lanka, and the Institute of Space Technology from Pakistan. And uh, how it works actually in Sri Lanka, which is our main uh, um, uh, test site for the project, uh, weather data are not integrated and shared. This is at all. Data are mainly available as hard copies, so they just write the numbers on papers, book, record book. Uh, there is no open standards at all. They never consider any open standard to be used. They're missing any database infrastructure, generally. Uh, the access to this data is limited and is it not free. And very often it's expensive, and so people that need to do any type of analysis on climate don't buy this data because it's too expensive. The stations that uh, are located in Sri Lanka uh, for 99% are manually operated. So it means that there is a people, a person that goes uh, and read manually the uh, level of water in the pluviometers and then write on the papers and then transmit uh, the data vocally over the phone to the central station that they will mark on, uh, on some uh, paper truck. So there is no automation and there is no uh, sharing and the data are also expensive to be used. In the project timeline, there is uh, the setup of the system, then the analysis of the system in terms of sustainability, because we want to understand how this can be then applied together. But then there is also the evaluation of how this data can actually be used in reality. So we implemented two different uh, uh, case study applications. And uh, one is related to the management of tank artificial basins. The, the second one is about the monitoring of drought, which I'm talking about. Uh, today. This is the integrated system and how does it work? We have the sensor, this sensor transmit automatically over GPRS uh, to a, a staging area. This staging area data are validated and goes in the storing area and then uh, they are available for the users. And uh, we are in this branch so we develop some uh, modelings that automatically take this data and then make uh, modelings about drought and then uh, inform the irrigation managers that are uh, the main stakeholders of this uh, task. In the study area is the Deduroya Basin that has a catchment of about 2,600 square kilometers uh, and uh, it falls under two climatic zones. Part of it is in a dry zone and part of it is in a wet zone. And uh, there is one uh, station uh, belonging to the meteorological department and three weather stations to the irrigation departments. None of them automatically. Uh, collect parameters, rainfall, temperature, humidity, and basic weather station data. The system that we developed we implemented two different uh, type of uh, 
uh, of system, uh, thinking about uh, a less professional but more replicable solution, which use just cables. We use Arduino as a main board, so this is open hardware. Then we use sensors, and uh, this is uh, wire connected. It's more modular. It's used common material to build it up, uh, and uh, easy to replace the parts. And the other one is based on a PCB that uh, Partners from Sri Lanka developed. Uh, and uh, uh, everything is integrated, so it's easier to deploy because you just go on the field, uh, put this, uh, the, the board and switch on. But uh, this is uh, more uh, professional. You need a higher level of uh, capacity, electronic capacity, to implement this and maintain it. And also for uh, the production, you need to rely on a third company that prints the board for you. Everything, of course, is open. If you go on the website for onset.org, you can find all the schematics of everything, uh, source code and instruction, tutorial, everything is open. We try to use uh, all the principles of open science during this project. So we have uh, open government of the project. Everybody can join in the project. Uh, everything, all the reports are freely available. Tutorial, everything is open. And. Uh, <laughs> Then we decided to put where to put the, the stations, uh, and we take uh, into consideration different aspects, the security, the accessibility. Uh, we try to have one station for each sub-basin, and uh, the open spaces, uh, the strength of the signal for the transmission, and uh, also the rainfall entropy, because rainfall is the main aspect that we want to monitor. So we want to put the station in the right place where uh, the phenomena is uh, more uh, relevant. And at the end, we deploy the 30 station in the system. Uh, as you see, 27 weather station and six rain, uh, rain gauges. Uh, and there are, these are some pictures of the installation. We generally choose uh, as much as possible schools for two reasons. One if uh, about security. So the stations are uh, in a uh, place where there is always people that can uh, guarantee the security of the station. The other reason is that uh, you can see also students, as more young students. This is also an opportunity to uh, somehow <coughs> involve uh, students uh, and let them understand the importance of climatic of the information of the environment where they live. And here we come. What is it about then? We have the station there. We have all the system. The system uses an open source standard and uses an open source software. Use East uh, SOS as a standard software to collect information, the sensor observation service to deliver. We have set up the stations, the system. Automatically, data goes from the station to the system. Then they are validated, and they are available on the web using a standard format. And from this, uh, we can implement some algorithms that automatically uh, get the data from uh, the systems and may perform some analysis. And uh, of course, we use uh, for the drought the uh, standard precipitation index, which is a recommended index for the World Meteorological Office. Uh, how it works briefly, if you take uh, uh, different uh, windows of time, 30, 60, or 120 days, and you uh, calculate uh, the uh, uh, sum of this precipitation, and you then display the frequency, the probability curve of this uh, sum of uh, window, average uh, windows, uh, moving windows sum, then you come out with uh, a, a Gaussian curve. And depending on where you are, you can detect different uh, uh, severity of drought. This is the basic uh, quick explanation. So uh, time to time, uh, every day, we can recalculate all the statistics and calculate where we are. And uh, how can we make this calculation if we need uh, a long uh, time series? And we just installed the 30 stations. We try to use uh, alternative data, but uh, data from the meteorological office of Sri Lanka was unable to be used because it's too difficult and too long time to finish uh, to uh, digitize. So we used CHIRP's data set, uh, which is daily aggregated, uh, globally uh, available. These are from satellite uh, missions and its interpretation. And, uh, are uh, have uh, 0.5 degrees resolution. 
and they are available as NetCDF. So we use uh, this CHIRPS dataset for historical uh, data in the area, and then uh, for daily data sets, since uh, the installation of the, the stations, uh, we use uh, uh, the sensor observation service standard, and we perform some requests to collect the data. The software, how we implemented it, uh, as a first step uh, to uh, check uh, how does it works and how feasible is it. Uh, we use the uh, ISOS as a, is a server of the data, so we use the three uh, main requests, the get capability to get uh, the, na the name of the stations that are in the area, the described sensor to get information about the sensor, and then get observation to actually download the data using some filters to, for example, download the last week uh, observation about rainfall. And then uh, uh, we use this CHIRPS data set and we set up uh, a Jupyter Notebook uh, uh, script uh, um, where we can perform the analysis and come out at the end with the plot and uh, the classification of the period if we are in drought or not. So. Basically, these are the results. Uh, you can see in uh, orange the CHIRPS data set of precipitation, and in blue the Foronse. You can see that there is uh, a quite good fitness of this uh, data set when there is the overlapping. And uh, we could uh, uh, find out uh, uh, three different uh, drought periods. And, uh, one occurred in the half of August, and uh, one occurred in the beginning of December, and uh, one uh, classified as a very dry conduction. Only one, this one, in, in, the, in the end. So I quickly come to the conclusions, uh, uh, and uh, also the evolution, maybe I can explain also the evolution. Here we have tested how the system works. We, we need to make some uh, more uh, validation. So the quality assessment, uh, maybe using CHIRPS data set, uh, because uh, it's difficult to make uh, a validation if you don't have data, right? So we can compare the result with the, the same uh, analysis, uh, but just using CHIRPS data set. Uh, we, want to compare this system with the station that we have in Ticino and where we can have data so that we can validate the methodology, of course, in a different location. And then we are going to develop a web portal, which is uh, which will be web-based web with a map and uh, the location of each station that uh, will display different color and different information where they click it to show the plots of drought indexes or not, so that uh, the irrigation department authorities can use this data to actually plan uh, their intervention in case of drought, uh, saving waters, and uh, all these kind of things. And uh, yeah, I will uh, finish with uh, a couple of uh, promotion, let's say. The first things that uh, we are applying uh, in the next uh, couple of months for an extension of the project, there are some funds available for fostering the adoption of the solution developed in the projects. And so if there is low, any low-income countries that want to participate in this ex sort of extension where we propose uh, to make uh, some local training of the trainers and then they will uh, deploy some station locally and they will participate in a sort of creation of a community to this kind of uh, systems. And the final goal is to create uh, for low-income country a fire hydroclimatic uh, data network where people can collaborate and where can share data uh, that are fair and uh, available uh, also like a system. Uh, these are some of the selection criteria, but uh, if anybody is interested or has any contact with people in the low-income countries, we are very happy to collaborate with. We tested it in, uh, so mainly in uh, Sri Lanka, but we will be very nice to test in different locations worldwide, something in Africa and South America, for example, or Caribbean or something like this. 
And the last thing is that uh, there is a special issues on Open Science Institute special domain, which I am uh, coordinating. So if uh, the deadline was 31 August, but we are going to extend because uh, we have so far only seven papers. So if somebody is interested, there will be at least a couple of months of extensions. Thank you very much. Time for questions. No question? Yeah. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for the good presentation. So approximately how much does it cost to deploy and implement all these kind of or similar systems? Yes. So the cost of the components to build up a station is around uh, 400 US dollar, the cost of the components. Then uh, you have to add uh, the cost of the installations, uh, and uh, you can have, depending on where you are, the cost of labors. But uh, the comparison that we take as a reference is uh, local stations uh, in uh, at lo uh, regional level in Switzerland that uh, have a similar uh, accuracy. Here I didn't talk, but there is a paper that shows that this such a kind of system can reach the accuracy of, uh, let's say, a second level uh, monitoring networks, which is uh, not the high precise uh, to make uh, climate change studies, but he has, for example, temperature at 0 0.2 degrees of errors of accuracy. So still a good accuracy to handle most of the case, uh, uh, practical cases. And, uh, the comparison is uh, with the station in Switzerland that costs about 7,000, the precision, and this one is going to be about 600 US dollars. And then, uh, yeah, it depends on the numbers. Okay, if no more questions, we can go for lunch. Thank you very much.